Hello? Hello. You're catching me so early that I don't even have my VTubing software set up yet. Oh my goodness. Hold on. I got like a million windows to boot up. Sorry, I try to, um... I try to get to where I need to be quickly after work, but sometimes life comes in the way of that. And specifically today, I had to talk to my landlord, so... Sorry, hold on. People are saying something's going on in a uh, Discord with like error checking. We're gonna check that out in a second. Joe, hello. You're catching pre VTubing software Gary here. Oh my goodness, what are you guys? What are you guys oh. even doing? Wait, you guys don't hear me in a loop, do ya? I don't think so. I think we're I think we're muted both ways. Okay, we are sweet. Uh, let's turn on some music so that way we cannot be here in limbo. Um, where is the music? Lo-fi hip hop mix cowboy bebop. What kind of lo-fi mix? Yeah, I can do it. All right, so let's get the VTubing software going. We're a little bit too uh, not VTubing right now. Did you see that bot I put on the Discord? It does compilation and runs. Might be the fun bot to have on your server. Uh, stats are pretty fun to look at as well. Um, I mean, we can. What did I just drop? The hell? Oh my goodness. Um, I mean, we can check it out in a second. I haven't had a chance to really look at the Discord at all, to be totally honest with you. It's just like middle of the week, nine to five on top of like everything else. Somebody called me. Oh, my dealership called me. Sweet. Um, and now I need to boot up this on my phone. Sorry, I did not realize the music was that loud. That was my B. <laughs> Ow. Okay, let's get VTubing going because we're a little bit, um, we're a little bit uh, not visualized right now. So give me just half a second. Beep, beep, beep. Okay. Okay, where's where's my VTubing stuff? We need to get that going. Sorry, usually I do this before stream, but uh, hey, that's life, you know? Okay, I should pop up any second. Okay, that's my VTubing software layer. It should go transparent in about two seconds. There we go. Hello, I'm Gary, Gary the Good Boy. And today, we're gonna be working with uh, C++ some more. Oh my goodness, are you guys ready for this? You guys ready for this action? Okay, so first, what is going on in the Discord? Made. Sleepy Mushroom, what's up? Hello, hello. How's everyone doing today? Okay, so what's going on in the Discord? Cause there's like something, something weird. All right, so. Yeah, I forgot last night that operator wasn't a thinny. Just change the operator to arrow with a pointer to it and it should be fine. Um, by the way, you know you can use auto as the return type without declare type. It's more used for getting the evaluation. Oh, by the way, there's a bot on a server that me and my friends used to use in college that's pretty neat if you want. A Discord bot to execute your spaghetti code, execute code, view assembly output, and more. Open source and free forever, powered by godbolt.org and wandbox.org? Is that safe? Also, who just came into the server? S! Wow, very specific. Oh my goodness. All the f sharp builds fail on the bot? Damn. Okay, so, uh, maybe. I'm kind of wary about adding bots to the Discord. I have never thoroughly investigated sleepy mushroom oh your s dot 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 on discord but thank you appreciated okay hold on we're getting copyright issues on the music here so we're gonna swap over to uh sessions diana the copyright free music by riot games okay grab this chat box chat what get up there there you go okay so where were we at well today we're doing collision boxes yesterday we successfully created and well, we had the enemy. Now we have bullets spraying at regular intervals. There is some lag eventually, but um, we were going to implement coaling. The problem with coaling is I think we're going to have issues with um, with it. We're going to have issues because um, 
we just we just are it's it's gonna be a problem it's gonna be a problem because you need to have another vector that's like a temporary vector and then you gravestone tombstone you have tombstone elements in that vector that from bullets you've killed and then once in a blue moon you call and delete the whole list and then you start over and then you have a new vector with temporary bullets that then get cold and all that shit um oh my god that sounds complicated no you put the tombstone ones in the same vector you look at and you skip the tombstone ones yeah but that sounds like eventually you're gonna have to clear it out anyway like it's an inevitability right good you have a discord get yeah. Because I want to kind of perfectly forward the return type. Auto deduces ignore reference. Oh. Have you take a look at my code? Oh, on the Discord? No, I haven't had a chance to do anything, dude. <laughs> um. <clears throat> okay, okay, okay. What's going on here? Where's your code? This. Okay. Uh, wait, no, that's not yours. It wasn't this, was it? The template? No, it must be. No, that's you. His was Godbolt. Wait, what? Oh, there. Gotcha. Sorry, missed that. Okay, let's see here. Not the prettiest, but still simple enough. Fix size pool, but only allocate once and contiguous. Assume 10,000 bullets at 128 bytes each. 1250 kilobytes. The simple trick here is that we placement new, construct at, right at the position of the dead bullet. We could do pointer position bullet, but why bother with a copy assignment? Mwah. And I private M pool so Gary knows not to F around with it. Excuse me! <clears throat> it's M underscore pool underscore, all right? Know your C++ syntax. Uh, that's not, that's not the real syntax. I bool M dead in bullet class, not quite a generic solution like STD optional or write a similar because I try to have the simple code to not overwhelm Gary Pfft, like I'm ever overwhelmed. What do you got here? Struct bullet, bullet int, bullet class is not a default constructible. Mark dead, bool is dead, const return dead, bool M dead equals false. Struct bullet pool, public bullet pool mpool replace vector okay that sounds like a challenge for another day because today we're doing collision rectangles because i have been putting this off for like three days today oh god okay boom no more collision yep can't even run it because we're trying to render the box okay here we go. Click on the link to see the full code. Uh, I will probably tomorrow, but we need to do collision boxes today. That's that's the goal today. We got to keep our scope, chat. So today we're fixing collision boxes. Uh, rotatable rectangles is the goal. Rectangles that rotate based on the <clears throat> based on the angle that it renders at. In which case, or sorry, in which case. Uh, under the bullet class, we have float angle. That angle is what the renderer uses to change the angle of whatever. We're going to make that angle be transformed into a radion and under our collision header, rotate the collision box based on that same rotation. <gasps> Andrew, hello. How's it going, guacamole? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Jeez, I need to drink some water, I guess. Wow. All right, collision boxes. We're going to make a struct. We're going to export this struct. Export struct. And we're going to call this create rectangle. Should that be a function or should we just have something called rectangle and then a function called create rectangle? We'll call this collision rectangle. That's what we'll call it. So this collision rectangle is all it's going to be is int x. We can actually get away with that here. Int y. Uh, no, I'm sorry. These are going to be floats because we're doing we have a lot of float issues. So float x, float y, 
float width float height. No, wait. Are we going to do that? No, we're not. I'm debating whether to do this or to just actually make like an array. Wait, how the fuck do I make a C style array? <laughs> it's been so long. Uh, it's going to be float rectangle array size eight equals. Or I guess that's it, right? Where or. Never mind, I don't like that. We're going to do this. We're going to have. Rectangle. Uh, points. Then we're going to have export create rect angle. The parameters being. Oh, do we want to make four rectangle points or do we just have an array of eight points? You can just do F floating point M1, floating point P2, floating point P3, floating point P4. Wait, is floating point an actual like thing? No, it's not. Okay, sweet. Um. Floating point. I like that. I actually like that. So now we have float X, float Y. And this create rectangle is going to take. Now, when we create a rectangle of any kind, are we? It is necessary to feed four parameters to it, right? The problem is, is I don't want a situation where I think it's going to be cleaner if we don't have this. I'm thinking it's cleaner if we actually just take eight parameters into this create rectangle function and then it just creates the rectangle accordingly. And if we don't input anything, it assumes it's zero. Am I actually now that I think about it? Am I ever even defining what's in this rectangle in terms of like size? Because the only time we're ever using this rectangle specifically is for collision purposes. That is the only reason we ever use this rectangle. OK, everything else is handled by the SDL rectangle, and that matters because when you render objects, you need SDL rectangles to know where the fuck everything goes, right? It's SDL. It requires that. So maybe we just have like collision rectangles, in which case. In which case. We don't need any parameters because all we need to do is just create the rectangle in the bullet hero, whatever, and then immediately define that eight point array as the size of. The model, probably the rendered rectangle. I don't think we need any parameters, do we? Because at no point, oh, I guess I might change the parameters, but I can do that manually on a bullet by bullet basis, right? Oh, that'd be difficult though, huh? Because I don't want to do like if enumerator type, then reduce hitbox by this. I might have to, but. Um, use SDLF point. I want to make this like custom. I don't think we need SDL at all, actually. Uh, CPP reference copy elision. What's this? Uh, P value semantics guaranteed copy elision omits copy and move constructors resulting in zero copy pass by value semantics. Initializing the return to object in the return statement when the operand is the P value PR value, the same class type. I don't know what this is doing. This was me talking to what's up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my bad. A little over my head. OK, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to have. Create. Collision rectangle. That's what we're going to do, because we're going to use this a lot. 
So this create collision rectangle will have eight values. It will return a, well, what will it return? It needs to return an array of eight points. Oh, how do I do that easily? I need like an object. Maybe under bullets, we make another struct that's like called collision box with eight values. And then those values. So I don't need this anymore then, huh? And those eight values are defined by this function. I think that's what we well, no, because everything is going to use the hitbox. Is this like a sprite? I think it is. No, Sprite has nothing to do with collision. This is just the art. Hmm. What a weird conundrum. I'm the problem is, is I don't know what return type for now. We'll put void, but I don't think that's what we're going to be doing, obviously. Um, okay. So we're going to need an array type. I don't remember how to make a C style array. Oh, God, I almost, I'm used to using STD vectors. Is it STD array? <laughs> no. Uh, float is called after floating point numbers. So floating point is kind of strange. Andrew, hello. Welcome to let's create our own rotational rectangle, which takes eight points x1 y1 x2 y2 all the way up to x4 y4 and then we use those four points to rotate accordingly all that shit right so we're gonna have stuff like void or export void rotate collision rectangle uh what else here we're gonna have um export void translate Collision rectangle. Um, export void. Uh, rotate translate. Um, what else? Change size. Resize collision rectangle. What else are we doing here for collision purposes? Oh, and then I guess we need to actually create the fucking collision. Insert. Well, I guess we can put that up there, huh? Oh, I guess I can just do this. Copy. Boom, 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 boom. Insert collision. <laughs> that easy. Just insert some collision, you know. What's up? There we go. Easy peasy. Are we actually doing a rotated rectangle for collision today? Yes, it's actually what we're doing. It's all we're focusing on and it's all we're going to do. OK, we're not going to get distracted. Float is called after floating point number. So floating point is kind of strange. Mm. OK, and this will be our collision that we're going to change later, but that's fine. We could test for that. Collision is going to be super easy to test for. Um, I'm just putting all my collision rectangles here because this is only we are only using these rectangles for collision. OK, that is the only purpose of these. So we're going to create a rectangle based on collision. So what are we going to need? Maybe what we do is we return. I'm just debating whether or not we have the input of like an SDL rect. Um, whole render something like that um so that way hold on let's import sdl.h semicolon um so that way we can just give it the render rectangle as like a create a collision rectangle and if we need something different we can resize it or something that's kind of my thought process there and we use those four points as a way to be like here here is our X1, Y1 through X4, Y4 that goes on the array. So I think this needs to return an array, but I haven't done a C style array in like 30 days. So bear with me here. Um, it needs to be a float. 
array. And we're going to call this uh, new rect array size 8. That is the syntax for a C-style array, correct? <clears throat> uh, I think point is not really a good name for most of the times because if you want to add two points together and you often want in games, it makes no mathematical sense. So vector is a better name. The only problem is what C++ names vector is the same name. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. You're talking about like mathematical vectors or like directional vectors, not like C++ vectors. It's like, it's like STD iota which i swear to god the only reason i remember this is because i just think of this as like an acronym where it's like iterate over the um iterate over the assignment is that how i remember that iterate over the assignment that's usually what i think of iota as otherwise i just don't remember it apl's iota operator Oh, I'd rather just think of it as an acronym. I like to call math vectors vec instead of vector. Super plink. Oh, hello. How are you? I haven't seen you in a hot minute. Okay. So we have a new rectangle. I think that is the syntax for a C style array. Its initialization will be based or I guess it is equal to. Um, whole render. Ooh. No, we're going to make this at the end because we're going to return new rect. That's what we're going to return. And then that way we're going to toss back float. Oh, my God. Do I just return a float? Wait, I haven't done this before. How do I return an array? Do I have to return the address of the array? Oh, this seems like it's going to be memory issues all over the fucking place. Oh, wait, am I really returning an array? Well, I only care. Well, that's fine. That's fine because the only time I ever touch these collision rectangles is during the initialization of the game. I'm never touching collision outside of that, right? So I guess it's fine for us to take a little longer to pass around an array, but oof, I don't know if I want to create the array in the function, do I? STD vector is called vec and rust. You cannot return a C style array on stack. You use STD array. Oh, based. Thank you. Not G slice array. I'm glad that adds that in. Uh, standard array does not work because the argument list is missing. Import STD. STD array. Does it have to be like that? Yes. No. Argument list for STD array is missing. What's going on here? What's going on here? Uh, da -da 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 -da, 17 errors. What's going on? Array input names equals this. Do you see anything wrong or strange about this line of code? Are you aware that STD array is a template class like STD vector? Now compare to how, how are you declaring array? Wait, what? Syntax? STD array size 8. Oh, I'd have to put float. Hmm. Expected a declaration. Hmm. 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 Interesting. STD array float eight new rack. Oh, it's like a uh, it's like a vector. Oh shit! I didn't know that. Okay, hold on. New no, it's gonna be float eight 
new rectangle. Okay, there we go. Okay, sweet. Um, and then we are returning an STD array. Okay, doesn't work. Why? Oh, I have to have to define it? Holy shit. Float eight. Wow, that worked. Okay, sweet. Um, and it's fine for us to do this without passing it by reference because we're only using this at game start, right? Uh, you could just use using call rect std array float eight. Nah. There's no reason to initialize this std array. You won't be able to ctad it, so just spell it out. What's ctad? Copy the actual dick. What? Return auto. Oh, yeah, based. OK. OK, OK. What else are we doing here? We need to take this rectangle, the address of it, and then make this array equal those values. And we need to interpret the X and Y values of each point of the rectangle based on this, which is not the same. The SDL rectangle has an X and Y value. That's one of the points, but you also need to find the distance of the other ones, which is doable because you know the size of the rectangle. But the width is like a side of it. Basically, hold on, let me bring out paint for you guys. Flashbang. So basically, we have a rectangle, right? And in our thing, what we're making is a X, Y, X, Y, X, Y, X, Y. So we're t that's why we take eight values in the new array, right? Now, the problem is, is SDL rect only gives me this X, well, sorry, this X and Y value and the distance of width and height. Width and height. So it's a four element uh, vector, struct, whatever. It has an X and Y value, a width and a height. Now, we can do a function now where we're going to create a collision rectangle, finding these four values return an array with those four values, eight values, based only on this information. So we have to think about that. I think you can do auto as the return type, or does that not work? I checked and it returns pointer to the stack array. It does work, but I wouldn't recommend that. Return auto is usually for templates. One day we're going to have to fuck around with templates and that day will never come. Okay, so we have to create the array first and then we're going to return it. So I guess we'll figure out the first point. So I guess the question is, chat, our new collision rectangles, where do we want our first X, Y value to be? It should be the top left because everything in SDL and every other rectangle we've been using so far is using those values. So we should do that, right? I don't know if that's normal programming practice, but that's what I'm going to do. So new rect array spot zero. Oops, oops, oops. Sorry, sorry, syntax. Zero is going to be equal to whole render dot x. New rect one. There must be a better way to do this. Whole render dot y. Now I'm going bottom right. So new rect two is going to be equal. OK, now we have to think about this. In fact, here, let's just do this. Oh, God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There must be a better way to do this, but whatever. Three, four, five, six, seven. OK. Auto X, Y with height equals a whole render. Wrong. OK, that is not what we're doing. That would fuck us up. OK. Um, Rec knows where it is at all times. It knows this because it knows where it isn't by subtracting where it is from where it isn't. Obtains the difference or deviation. The collision subsystem using deviations to generate. Hold on. We're not. Oh, God. Don't even open that value yet. OK. 
So we're going to do this because it's easy for me to read. And what is programming but being easy to read, okay? So now we need to define the X and Y value of the bottom right of the rectangle. That's the hardest one, correct? No, I'm sorry. We started on the top left. Now we're going bottom left, right? What would be the easiest for me to understand if we were drawing a rectangle starting from the... We would go top right. Okay, two and three are top right. So the Y value stays the same. The X value increases. So it is width. So point two is, or point, yeah. Point X2 is equal to the whole render dot X width, right? Yes, because the width is the whole side of the rectangle. So that is correct. And then point three, which is Y2, the top right of the rectangle is going to be whole render dot Y again, because that doesn't change. These one and three are always equal. Oh, there is a better way to do this. If I know which angles are going to be the same, Oh, there is a much cleaner way to do this. Like one and three are always going to be the same value, right? I'm not saying we're going to reduce the size of this. This should be eight points, but I bet there's a way to be like one comma three is equal to this. But whatever, we'll do it this way. Easy to read for new people, okay? Two equals X plus W. No, maybe. What? I did draw a picture. I was correct. Hard to tell without a pic. What do you guys mean? Okay, flashbang. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do the exact same fucking picture, boys. Okay? Here. This is our rectangle, okay? So, an SDL rectangle only gives us the following information. This XY value, width, and height. Now, this matters because... Our new rectangle is actually going to be in this order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's going to be an eight element array with those eight points. Okay. So my logic is this point three or the, the fourth element of the array, which is three. Um, this point will always equal this point. That was what I was getting at, right? This X value will always equal this X value, right? So this X is equal to width. This width is equal to X2, which is this one, right? That's what I was saying. And this XY value is just width and height together. Draw the OO point, it's here. Just draw one with numbers? What do you mean? Chat! Oh my god! How is that not... How do you guys not get that? Okay, this is point zero, zero. This is four. This is two. Now, this is going to be equal to zero. Sorry. Four, comma, zero. The X value and the Y value. This is going to be equal to 0, 2, the y value. This is going to be equal to 4, 2, which is this value and this value. D does that make more sense now? Top left is not always 0, 0. I agree, but for the sake of example... <laughs> yeah, I know, but whatever this is, this is just your rendered rectangle location. Okay, so the collision box will always start the same. That's why I don't put it as zero, zero. I put it as new rect X and new rect Y, which is the top left of the rectangle is equal to the rendered X and Y of the rectangle. That's it's the same value, whether it's zero or whether it's 500 or 50, it's going to start there. These are all by reference to the width and height. That's the only difference. Right? Hold on. Well, let's just do what chat says. Let's replace all the numbers again. This time we'll do 50, comma, 50. 
This is equal to four. This is equal to two. Oh, you have to add them together. Oh, chat, you're so smart. Okay, never mind. I get it. Ha ha ha. Okay, so this is width plus full render dot x. This is y value plus. Well, no, actually, this is width. No, this is width plus x. This is just y. You're not adding anything. Okay. Chat, you're so smart. Why would you need eight ints for the collision box? Wrong. Eight floats. Ah. Huh? Oh, wait, no, I can't. These do turn into ints. Wait, chat, what's the order of operations? If, okay, so SDL recs only are integers, but this array contains floats. If I make this array element equal to an integer, does this turn into an int or is that staying a float? I know there's like a type difference here. Are we gonna have issues with that? Or I guess I could make like a temporary, hmm. Oh, you're so smart. It's F rect. Okay, never mind. I guess that is fine because all of my uh, rendered rectangles are um, F recs anyway. Okay, wow, that took care of itself. Sweet. Based. Okay. Uh, point four is the bottom left of the rectangle, which is going to be the same X value, but the Y value will be different. It's going to be whole render dot height plus whole render dot y. And then this is the bottom right of the rectangle. So in this case, we copy and paste both. Okay. Wow. I made that so much more complicated than it had to be. I think, <laughs> I think I made that really complicated, but that's okay. Um, it will cast to a float. It will cast int to float. Okay. Gonna do collisions, so you need a redundant data for better performance. Um, do I? Is that what I'm doing? I'm not sure. It's the classic space versus time in computer science. Do we? The math stuff is really fast on CPU and memory not. Interesting. Um... I mean, we're going to be comparing by where it is on the screen, and then we're going to call the function every frame. So I don't know if that's based on time or it's based on space, but I think it's based on space, right? Okay. So now, now that we have a rectangle of some kind, okay, we have eight points and it's okay. Oh God. How do we test this? So first things first, game logic needs to drop all collision shit. So we are not, what are we not doing here? We're not testing for hero collision. And I think that's all we need to do. Okay, so no longer testing for collision, but what it does do is it successfully renders. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to render what? We're gonna render a rectangle made here, maybe? That's how we test it? Set collision angle. So that gets changed later. Well, oh God. Let's just make the module and then we'll test shit. Okay, I think that's a better way to do this here. So now we're gonna do the easier one. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna translate. I think that's easier to do than whatever, okay? So we're gonna return in STD array float eight. Is that smart? Well, maybe we do STD array address or maybe float eight address and we call that collision rect. And then maybe we have. How do we translate this? What would we want the parameters to be? We are talking about using two points to represent a rectangle versus four points. Two points use less memory space, but every time you need to do a collision, you need to calculate the other two points. So maybe four points would be better. I don't know. No, this is fine because what we're going to do is in our collision, we're actually going to be hold on chat. I'm going to be honest with you. 
we're kind of copying a i'm trying not to just look at the paper and copy it um army collision rectangles c plus plus okay where is it no 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 the fuck wait wreck tangle resize c plus plus army you guys know what i'm talking about right this okay sweet look at the paper and copy it no no no, no we're not gonna do that okay so the idea is when we actually get to collision this is where we're kind of getting our basic idea from so that's going to be resized we'll figure that out in a second um okay so this is what we're going to do for collision basically the idea is we're going to make a collision that's going to test a few things we're going to be drawing imagine well imagine we're going to be drawing lines between two points within a certain distance of objects being next to each other when these lines cross test success for collision in addition Box C is not the area that they collide in, but a separate rectangle. We also test if there's a rectangle within another rectangle. And that's kind of the logic there. I think that's what they do here. So like A intersects B is true, yada yada. Or I guess in this example. But yeah, we're not going to copy this, but that's the idea. Also, this is a uh, interior exterior check, I guess. That's kind of the idea anyway. Um, you don't really need to calculate the others. This is because two other points is just copy fields of existing points. I think you all are assuming that the boxes are AABB, but if they aren't, then you also need a theta. AABB. What, wait, what are you guys saying? Hold on. If we're testing for collision, all I care about is, hmm. I mean, all you really care about is if any line touches another line, and those lines are going to be a vector between two points. Oh, are we really going to have four vectors? Ew. What about four vectors or a 2D vector? Ew. I was thinking about a vector of elements between these things, but I, I don't want like 200 length vectors everywhere. I can't really see how we'll rotate them. Oh, we're going to rotate these, by the way. I guess we could do that first. Basically, the idea is we're going to rotate based on a point. So the idea is we're going to be, you know, we're going to have this, the address of it, call it collision rect, and then the other parameter would be like an SDL floating point or something. And that point will be like the rotation that we want to rotate from. So rotation angle or rotation point. And then we rotate around that point based on uh, angle. So we'll call it angle angle. <laughs> angle new uh, rotating rotate value there. That'll be our thing. Uh, so we're going to import bullets oops semicolon there we go so now we have bullets which takes oh bullet angle sorry 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 bullet angle there we go fuck wait I don't want bullet angle I know you guys don't see this it's not a type name Oh, you know what? I don't need any of that. I can just take uh, the value of it, right? Which is going to be a float value. So float a uh, new angle. Boom. And that way we can rotate. So we're going to have a float value, the new angle we're going to be rotating to, a rotation point, and then that rectangle we're going to rotate points around. That's how we're going to do it. I kind of can't see point in rotating bounding box in a 2D game. Convert to polar and then add theta to convert back. Show Andrew your Nova attack. Oh, it's beautiful. Hold on. Wait, I'm missing a parentheses. Oh, uh, this is going to take a float. Uh, hold on. This. Okay, look at this. Oh, it's beautiful. 
Isn't it beautiful? I like it. Why are you guys laughing? This is this is wonderful. I think this is great. This is exactly what I want. Obviously, it's too many bullets or the bullets are too big or whatever. The collision boxes are weird, but that's because SDL Rex don't re render. Pog? I know it's Pog. It's beautiful. But this is why we need to rotate the rectangles because you can see if we pause it here. Oh, gosh. Stop. I just want to... There. Okay, you can see little red rectangles. Oh, hold on. We'll just restart it. You can see little itty bitty red rectangles around each bullet. I wish I could pause it. Oh, there we go. You can see little red rectangles around the bullets where my character is that are horizontal compared to the shot. And that's because they don't rotate. And that's a problem. So we're going to base a rotation point around the same angle. This just crashed around the same angle that um, we're going to be using to render with. So they use the same thing. You might want to figure out how you're going to programmatically detect two lines crossing here. Hint, you'll need to solve a complicated algebraic equation at least 16 times. Oh, God. Well, I thought you could do something like... I thought you could do something like, could you not... Could you not have the Y value of one point of the rectangle, the Y value of the other... No, that's not good enough. You need the X and Y value of every... So X1, X, X1, Y1, X2, Y2. You would have a line drawn between these two that only exists, or at least is only ever touched, use resources to check when in certain distance in units from another line, from another entity. Hmm. You can do something called reading the paper. Yeah, I could, but... Mm. This is easy if boxes are not rotated. If they are, then this is hard to calculate. It's okay. We'll figure it out. We'll read the paper if we get stuck. But right now, we're focusing on just translating and rotating and shit. So translating is the easiest, right? Because all I need to do is just take the rectangle and move it. We're not rotating it. We're not resizing it. We're just moving the rectangle. So I guess the hard part is going to be how do we what are the parameters of the function? We have the rectangle we're going to be translating. Can someone share a link? Oh, sure, I can do that. Copy paste. This is what the US Army teaches to its uh, army men who program C++. In fact, what do they do? Hold on. We're not even at the collision shit yet. Um. Where's our... There. Uh, checking rectangle overlap, rectangle intersect 2D function. Um, Is that the whole code? Damn. Inline bool intersect. Do the two sides of the rectangles intersect. Rectangle 1, rectangle 2. Cutoff value. Uses a for loop. Double. Oh my god! If this continues, if this return true, otherwise return false. Damn. What the flip is that font? Timothy Scoilet. Hello. You sound like a zoomer. Um, this is uh, ink free, size 10, bold. Bruh, the request is blocked. Ha <laughs> ha, you're Russian. <laughs> hey, Andrew, I'll share it in the uh, Discord. Um, okay, copy, paste, use whatever, use whatever resources you need to get that link going for you. There you go. Okay, so we're going to translate the rectangle. So let me think about this. If we're going to be translating the collision rectangle, it's the easiest one, right? Resizing it is harder. Well, no, resizing it would be pretty easy because all you're doing is changing the width and the height, which changes these four values and nothing else. So that's pretty easy. Translate's going to be difficult because it does actually move all of them. 
Okay, this is driving me mad. How can we do this better? Can I just do like comma four? Is this allowed? Okay, it must be. It's not get yelling at me. This is one comma three. Uh, two comma six. And this is five comma seven. Is that is that allowed? Can I like run the game? Oh, it is allowed based. Sweet. Okay. Excellent. So that looks cleaner. Can you change that font, please? No, it's cute. Illegal military docs. Oh, geez. Okay. So we have our new wrecked. What is our what are we going to do with it to not rotate it, but to translate it? Well, we're going to have to take the parameter. How? How would we even translate it? What are the what are the values we're going to give? It's just moving the X and Y value. Could I just do that? Well, no, that's not the same. Well, it is kind of the same, right? Because it's my goddamn engine. I can define re I was thinking translate like you would be moving the entire thing, but I guess you don't need to do that. It's only by reference to the first element of the array or the first and second element of the array zero and one. So I guess all you would need is just a float X and float Y. Or I guess I can call them, you know, uh, new X and new Y. And that's all I really need, right? So what you would do is you would take collision rectangle array size zero and make it equal to new X and then new rect array point one would be equal to new Y. And then we're going to return that STD array, which is col rect. Okay. That's all I need then, right? So whenever I want to move that collision rectangle, I move the X and Y value. Do I need a function for this? I mean, I guess, I guess we are going to be doing it quite a bit. You need to change all the X and Y values. Oh, oh, that's right. Oh, chat. Oh, you're killing me. Okay. So it's going to be zero. Four. Oh my god, it's going to be the same thing. One, three. Oh god, it's going to be the same fucking thing. So new... Or, sorry. Collision wrecked. Two, six. And collision wrecked. Five, seven. Okay, so now we just change this and translate it to the new point. Oh, jeez. Chat, why did you write this code this way? Hello, sir. Have you heard our Lord and Savior of the for loop? Well, you can't for loop this. The, you can't for loop this very well unless you rearrange how you built the array because these are random. It's like 0, 4, 1, 3, 2, 6, 5, 7. That doesn't seem very clean. Every point moves the same amount, no? No. Yes. You're only translating. So what does that mean? Uh, I don't think such array access is implemented to array. Well, you're talking about like vectors then, right, Andrew? We want this to be a C style array because I don't need a dynamic. I don't need like a dynamic like array. I just need an array. of si This will never be more than eight elements. I feel more comfortable with a C style array here. I mean, double index? Index? The fuck? Okay, let's do it this way because it's more fun. Okay, 
So we have the X value here, which is 0, 1, 2. It is an X value. So the X value is currently width plus X of the original rectangle. Now, I think what we do is plus equals new X. No, this is wrong. It's wrong because the new X, what if the new X and Y value are upper left compared to the new rectangle, which is to say they're negative values. Not negative, sorry. We want to treat them like we're subtracting with them. But by adding them, you have a situation where some of the X values of that rectangle are going to be just cattywampus. Because we're not plus equaling. It's really going to be... Hmm. You don't need and on collect rectangle there. Why? Am I not passing by reference on all of these? Or does the optimizer already take care of that? Why new X, new Y? Why not distance and angle? Because we're not messing with angles here? Isn't that what... Yeah? Yeah, no, I like this. This is readable to me. The comma operator in C++ evaluates both sides and then returns the last value. So line 28 is just doing col rect for new X. What? Line 28 is just doing. Oh, wait, what? So I'm doing this wrong as well. The comma operator evaluates both sides and then returns the last value. Oh, wait, did somebody? I thought somebody said this is the syntax for it because I don't really fuck around with C style arrays that much. Um, somebody. Int. 2 abc 1 comma 2 i thought i did this right i'm looking through chat now hmm so it's going to be different on c plus plus 23 for metaspan but yeah this is wrong for std array hmm so i can't combine them 8UI64 load. Which is digits 8. So... Do I have to do something like this? No. Syntax works, though. Uh, new rec 0 is equal to new rec 4 while render x. Whole render x. Um, wow, really? That's the syntax? Ew, it's so gross. That's disgusting. It's so ugly. I hate this chat. I hate it so much. This is not C++. This is C on some crooked ass shit. Okay. Okay, I'm not... Hold on. Copy. Paste. Copy. Paste. 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 One, three. Two. Six. Five. Seven. Hold on. Copy. Paste. 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 Okay. Wow. That was annoying. Um, you can do this. Auto, AX, AY, BX, BY, CX, CY, DX, DY, new rec. Damn. But you invent new syntax, but don't use the correct syntax I provide for some reason. Well, yeah. AX, CX equals four. Oh. Nah, we'll be fine. Okay. So. <sighs> Let me think. If we're translating... 
and we want to imply a new x and y value you can't just add it right you have to find the difference between this value and the old value and if it's negative no in any case you would just add it to the new one so i almost want to say plus equals new x plus equals new y except this is accounting for the difference between the original x and the original y that's difficult because what happens if you have a rectangle that's going to another position that is positive which will happen all the time but it's less than the original x you would want to subtract so I guess it would be new X. New X minus zero. Is that what I'm doing? Or zero minus new X. What's the downside of making it negative? If you make it negative, that will work if it's to the left up of the original rectangle but if it's to the bottom right so everything is positive and you want to add that also fucks you hmm equals something plus equals is cursed well it's c plus plus everything we do is cursed or blessed by the way if you want to know why that syntax try running this line c out one two Oh yeah, no. I know that string would fuck around. I mean, why that syntax didn't work? Damn. Yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. Plus, this, I can imagine this being a problem. Nah, I guess it wouldn't be the problem, but whatever. Okay. Let's think about this. How would you apply the new x to this? You can't just add. You almost need like an if statement where if new x is less than old x, then... Actually, can we take the new X and subtract it by the old X? And if it's positive, just add the new X to the original rectangle. And if it's negative, you add new, you subtract new X from the regular rectangle. Hmm. Can you explain what the value used to do with the plus part? Colrect 5 or Colrect 7? Oh, that's just... We haven't gotten that line yet. We still need to do this line first. Um, hmm. I'm just thinking about how we can apply the X and Y value to the original rectangle in a way that doesn't fuck up the final two points. What does translate mean? I don't see why every point shouldn't be moved to the same amount. The thing is, is that these, this custom rectangle we have, they're not, they're in the same array, but they're not necessary. They don't know they're a rectangle, right? I can't like do SDLF rect dot X and Y change and everything moves because SDL, the library already took care of that for me. These points need to change universally together. Otherwise only the top left point moves. If I only value the X and Y of the rectangle, right? I need to change X one through four and Y through four, one through four, in order to move the whole rectangle. And they change by the same amount, yes. This is correct. Because all this is, is just, is just the equivalent of the top left point. Yeah, it's 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 basically the width and height are not changing on the rectangle. That's all that changes here. This is complicated because this is like the bottom right of the rectangle and the X and Y value of the X2 and Y3. SDLF rect can't rotate though. Yep, that's the point. <laughs> That is the sole reason we are making our own rectangles is because SDLF rect can't rotate. That's why we're taking this value and turning it into our own rectangle and then we're gonna have our own rectangle system. Plus it's good programming practice. This is like year one programming shit, right? Make a shape and rotate the shape, right? 
So, actually, chat. No, I can't. I was about to say, let's do SDL Vertex and just have a bunch of vertexes on the screen we fuck around with, but that's not... We can't do that, right? That's like rendering shit. Uh, so we have four points here. You are not changing reference. If you are not changing reference, make it const reference. Oh, that's kind of based. Never mind, not based. It doesn't work. No, I can't change the value of a const, can I? No, not based at all. I can't change the value of a const value. In create collision rectangle. Oh, this? Wait, what's wrong? If you are not changing reference, made it const reference. If you are not changing reference, made it const reference. What? I don't know what you're saying there. Okay, hold on. Let's think about this. So, if we give a rectangle a new location for all of its points to move to, the width and height are not going to change, and the only x and y value is. That's why these are the same. These two do not follow those same rules, because while the width and height will stay the same, the points do have to move, and they can't just be equal to the new x and y value. Because otherwise, otherwise you have the issue where all of these points are on the same exact location and they shouldn't be. That's not the point here. In fact, it would just turn this into a line. Um, so what we actually want is to give it added value. The problem is, is we can't just added value it it would have to be, I wonder, do we take, make it equal to these points plus something? I wonder if then, now that we've made these equal, do we then say, um, this value zero plus new X. Would that work? So it has the base value, which is the new x, y, the new of the new x, y point, the top left of the rectangle is going to be x. No, that doesn't work. Because what if it's 50 and the rectangle is only like four units wide? It's like 0. 0.5050. No, that would be an issue. It would have to be the width can't change. The width can't change. But it has to be moved. But it's only ever in reference to these two points. Or this point. But the value of it doesn't change. Only in reference to where you're going. Which is why I have plus equals new x, but that doesn't work. Oh, what a weird logic problem. Hmm. I've never seen a new learner actually try to do const correctness without bitching about it. Well, it's so unnecessary. Uh, SDL F rect address const SDL F rect and in create collision rectangle. So you're saying instead of this, it should be const sdlf rect address okay i'll take your word for it i don't know the benefit of making this const i guess it's because we don't change the value of this rendered rectangle at any point in this function so by doing this we ensure safety mainly from ourselves to ever change sdlf rect for whatever reason accidental or otherwise right <clears throat> that's my guess You are not changing reference, make it const reference. Okay. That is exactly why. Ah, thank you, chat. Maybe back in the 70s, they should make things immutable by default and we can use the mute keyword instead of const. Oh, you mean like rust? Dirty, dirty rust? Ew, chat. Imagine a programming language 
that takes its name after rotting metal. Yeah, high, high class stuff there, chat. How does it feel to have a logo whose PNG size is like inefficient? Because it's so goddamn big and detailed. Ew, disgusting, all right? Gross. Const address allows you to pass temporary values inside and you can't really be expected to know it. Mm. Okay. Take your word for it. Uh, this does change though, but we don't need the address for this, right? We're passing the entire array into this translate. Is that inefficient? Probably, but I don't think we're passing it by value, are we? I actually don't know. We are changing its values. I think we're just... Fuck, I think it is the address. Yeah, I think we're passing the address of this array, and then we're addressing these points accordingly. Okay. Chat, you're still distracting me. Okay. Okay, how do we move these? Okay, so the width and height isn't going to change, so you cannot... You, you want to add something to it. The problem is, is what happens when the rectangle doesn't want to move to the bottom or to the right and it wants to move up and to the left. You have to subtract. In which case, I think what we need to do is this. Temp, or here we'll do int temp uh, x int temp y. Temp x is equal to col rect zero. How do I compare two numbers without using a bunch of if statements? Like if, wait, is that what I'm doing? There must be a better way to do that. The idea is that if the new rectangle is moving to the up left of the original rectangle, then we subtract X and Y from these amounts. So it's minus equals new X. Minus equals new Y. But if it's to the bottom right, oh, but then if it's like bottom left, then it's positive Y, negative X. That is so weird. Is this like a switch statement? Oh my God, it's a switch statement. int test new is going to be equal I guess I can make that like a not a boolean I guess it is just an int huh remove address from colrect and you just add it remove the address from colrect okay well, trust you. I guess we are changing the original array then, huh? Not like a referenced value. Compiler optimization is smart enough to inline these, so don't worry. Okay. Float offset x colrect zero minus new x float minus new y offset x. Okay, so we are doing offset. I think I was right about the switch case though. Hold on, hear me out. So we're gonna make int test new x and int test new y test new x is gonna be fuck are these ints I think these are bools so we're gonna have two true false statements so then equals for now well I guess we'll just make them exist if test new hold on if whole rect zero minus new x is greater Hey, I'm new. What kind of game is this? Oh, this is a, um, hold on. I'll show you right now.
It's a shoot 'em up. <gasps> oh, shoot 'em up. Oh shit. Oh my goodness, so exciting. Ooh. That's uh that's the plan right now. Uh this is a custom engine. I don't know if I really intended it to be this way, but that's kind of what we got here. Um custom engine, we're just doing it all from scratch and uh it's going to be fun. It's going to be a little shoot 'em, a little toho, as the kids say. Also, hi Snowball. Your name reminds me of Animal Farm. Try to translate a line on MS Paint. That's epic. I love it. Okay, new guy. Don't come in here and be an all throwing around compliments willy-nilly. I have you know, okay? I am a very smug person and very in my own head, okay? If you start complimenting me, I'm going to start thinking I'm a great programmer and it's going to be a bad time for everyone, okay? Don't let me cook, okay? Let me... I am like, hmm, chat... Imagine you guys are like the head chef of like a five-star restaurant, okay? Three Michelin stars, whatever the fuck you people do, okay? You make fantastic food every day and you work so hard and you research so much to have the best food around, okay? I come in with the skill set of a dishwasher, okay? If you tell me that my peanut butter sandwich is like restaurant worthy i'm gonna start cooking steak okay and i ain't ready okay get me to wash the bowls first okay don't be saying things are epic say hey man for being a hundred hours into c plus plus this is okay that's that's i'll take it okay <laughs> or when i was did a hundred hours of c plus plus i made my own fucking database with online access and i programmed fucking chat gdp you moron okay if wait i already have this um if this array point is minus this is greater or equal to zero then test new x is equal to false you know what? There's an easier way to do this. What if we just make them false by default and only have two test statements? Or I guess we can set them true because it'll assume positive. And then we only change them to false when these are negative. It's less than zero. I think that's what we do. So false being like it's negative and then we change accordingly. I think that's a better way to do it. If pull rect, uh, what's the Y one? One minus new Y is less than zero. Then test new Y is equal to false. Okay. Then we do this shit. Okay. Now we can cook. Okay. Beautiful. So we're going to have... I don't know if I need a switch statement here, do I? I kind of want to make it a switch. Switch based on test new X. I have multiple parameters of a switch statement. I think I can. Case uh, test new X equals True. How do I? Hmm. Is that what I do? No way, right? What I was thinking is it'd be test new y equals true, something like that. But the, I can't. This isn't the case, right? Better programmer than me. I'm still making a space shooter game in Pi game. I'm a freshman Counter-Strike counter student, and I can't wait to make games in C++. No hate at all. I'm beginning my C++ journey, too. Ah, oh, that's cute. <laughs> Try to translate a line. Why are you overcomplicating this? I don't think I'm overcomplicating this. I think I'm making this clean. All right. Hold on. These people are actual, like, real programmers. One second. So you're saying, let's draw a line in MS Paint. Here, we'll make this even simpler. Make it nice and thick. There, we have a line. 
translate the line to here. Okay, all you have to do is take this XY value and this XY value and well, because this is the direction we're going in, that is like adding. It's like the bottom right quadrant. So all we have to do is just add new X and new Y to the original values and that will move them to this location, okay? So you add X to go to here and Y to go to there and add X and go to here and Y to go to there. And that's our new line, right? The problem is what happens if the line is up here and you try to add X and Y? What's gonna happen is it won't go up there. It'll go here again it's when you add. So you actually have to subtract X and Y to get up there. So that's why we have a switch case because we're testing if you return negative values on the new X and Y, and if so, then subtract. But then you have the issue of what happens if a line is like over here? Then you have to subtract the Y value, but add to the X value. That's our issue. So why do you need a switch case? Well, because there's four cases. Wherever you wanna move the line, right? You either add X and Y, subtract X and Y, subtract y add x or subtract x add y in any case you're doing four different things and that screams like switch case to me personally you add a negative number yeah but how do you make it negative if you don't test the switch case to see which one's true i think i did this correctly chat pattern matching coming soon remember when you did when you do set position uh, where the fuck was set position? Was that... Attack? Let's see, we called the attack, sine, cosine... Set position, bullet. Set position, what did I do? M render X is equal to bullet position X. M render Y, bullet position Y. Collision box get updated, but that doesn't matter. I don't get it. How does that have anything to do with our new collision? You can't just take this and then add it to this. You can't do it because you might sometimes need to subtract with it. By the way, slit 3D, I see you in YouTube chat. It's all good, brah. <laughs> Listen, I may be a VTuber, but I ain't your sex slave, okay? I can't just be throwing around lines like that. Not I'm a wheel chicken nugget, okay? What the fuck? <laughs> a bunch of switch case set minus position Y, set minus position X. What? You can't use switch for that. The only option is to it to use if else ew i don't want to nest a bunch of if else statements remember that same thing no it's not it's not the same chat i can't just change the x and y value of this rectangle object because the other points in the rectangle don't know they're in a rectangle they just know they're in the array that's it unless you're saying i can like use a for loop to take every element of the array add or subtract x or add or subtract y to it but then you can't do that because these two points are always just referencing x it doesn't care about y at all Ooh, chat what a weird what a weird rectangle hmm i shouldn't use a switch statement this screams switch statement though doesn't it or can I not, or is C limited and C++ has never put in better switch statements? Oh wait, this should be equal, equal, I'm a moron. Um, parentheses? Oh, I guess I should put ands. So that's not the syntax. Expression must have a constant value. The value of test new X, line 28, um, cannot be used as a constant. Why? It is, but C++ switch is bad for now. 
you can only match one value to compile time known constant what around one hour you're doing the same shit i am hello hello hold on what is my audio ew everyone i'm learning that i should just start stream and just start pasting i sound so tired and just was i sick still i think i was uh, sick still containers because i um i did this shortly after we like how did i got i did sick. that before right only do an orthon orthogonal that was diablo one music based Full movement orth orthogon orthogonics orth orthogonically orthogonically there we go moving only in cardinal Good directions man. orthogonically is uh Switch is limit. Wow, I was so sick. How did you people watch me? Um, Switch is limited to primitives as well. No string comparison. Sinochron, listen, mister, coming in here telling me how I can be a better programmer. When you're in my chat, you do everything I say. Okay, I'm always right and I have no faults. Okay, listen, I don't know if you know this about me. I'm a streamer, I'm very self conscious. I need to be showered in compliments and how perfect my programming is. Okay. Cardinal direction movement. So maybe, hmm? maybe it's easier if instead of this, we set. Who needs documentation when you can just record everything you've ever done and just see what your line of thinking was at the time? Decrease. It does explicitly call for decrease. What if we just subtract it and we just leave this positive? This doesn't tell me Same anything here. We sub where is supposition? Me that we're gonna have a x velocity, and velocity is my uh, thing, and it's not it's not doing it. M collision and bullet position to when position is updated. Oh, there we go. Changing raw data. Yeah, don't touch load game or change data. Hmm. Why would you? Doesn't work. Error type hero m underscore sprite size. This declaration has no storage class. Or uh, type I don't think that answers my question. Ah! Oh, that was so loud. Ow, fuck me. Oh, my ears. Oh, they're ringing. That was so loud. Ow. Wow, he's gonna do the exact opposite of what he said right now. What? Is streaming enhancing or hindering your learning process? It's enhancing. Excuse me. We learn so much. It definitely helps because we teach him in chat. No, you guys don't teach me. You remind me of something I've already learned. All right. So what are we? What are we learning here? So no switch. Okay, everybody's making fun of me for switch statements. No switch statement. Okay. So we have a variety of true and false statements testing whether or not anything should be added or subtracted. So maybe we just keep this simple. We just make this equal plus equal new X and new Y. And we just do some if else statements if test new x equals true do this else test oh wait no i don't like this we'll test for false and then else it's going to be positive. And now we just do this. Which is this, this, you. Why is that backing up? This, this, and then we add. And it's going to be the same context here. Is this a better way to do it? I don't know, but we're doing it. Test new y equals false. New. Okay, so this. Instead of two, six, though, it needs to be five, seven. Elements five, seven, five, seven, 
New Y. New Y. Okay. Is this better? No. This is not true. This is not better. It doesn't solve my problem. Because what happens if X is true and Y is false? No, wait, this does solve for that. No, that's fine. This does, this does solve for that. Uh, did I just do it? Why do you need any comparisons? The problem is here, I'll draw it in paint. So I'm gonna flashbang you guys. Ready? And boom, flashbang. Okay, so the problem is this, chat. How do we take this circle and translate it, the center point right here? How do we take that circle point, the whole circle? How do we move it here? Well, we move it here by Hold on. Here, 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 and here. Now, how we do this chat is that if we want to move it here, all we have to do is add to the X value and add to the Y value, and then we have the new point. Okay, that's trivial. Anyone can do that. Then, if we want to get up here, you have to subtract the X value, subtract the Y value because it's opposite land in SDL. Then you get to this point. Easy, right? Now the problem is, is if we don't have comparisons, how do we move it up here? Because the X value is positive, but the Y value is negative. And likewise here, the X value is negative, but the Y value is positive. So we need to test it wherever the new point's gonna be. We know what quadrant it's in because the X and Y value are gonna be compared to this. So we're testing if it's like, you know, uh, negative X, negative Y, X, negative Y, uh, neg or negative X. No, this is X, Y. And then this is negative X, Y. That's the problem. Um... Explain what line Colrec 2, Colrec 6, new X does, minus new X does. So the idea is that 2 and 6 minus new X. That is, what line is that? That is the width plus X. So that is your um, 1, 2, 3. That's your bottom left side of the rectangle. So what you have to do there... Yeah, it's the bottom left and the bottom... Wait, I'm so sorry. Wait. Zero, one, two. Excuse me. It's the top right of the rectangle and the bottom right rectangle X value. That's what this is. So when you subtract here, what you're saying is that the X value, the new X rectangle value is going to be to the left of the new of the original rectangle. That's what this means. So that's why we test for false, because if it's false, this value is negative, which means you're subtracting new X from the value. That's that's what that means. Try to translate a line. Give the three points coordinate values and write it down. What? You could literally use a tan inverse YX to find the angle. There's no angle yet. We're just translating. We're not rotating. No, 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 we're not rotating. We're just translating. We are just moving this circle everywhere. Chat, this is whether I draw a line or not. This is what I'm going to come up with. This is the original circle. If we want to move it here. We subtract both. Subtract X, add Y, add X, subtract Y, add X, add Y. We need to have different cases. We need to compare to know which one to do which. We can't just add equals X and Y value because if I want to move the circle up here, it ends up moving down here. is the same as 2, 6, minus new X. Oh, I see what you're saying. Just use math here. There's no need for branching. How is... Chat is the 
same thing. Wait, I'm correct. It is this simple. Hold on. What are you saying? It's this simple. Okay. Float delta x. So the change in x. Float delta y. The change in y. Delta x. Delta y. That's not true. Fuck you. It's not this simple. Hold on. What are we doing here? <clears throat> we have a float value that's going to be equal to this subtracted value. And then we add those sub the new values to that. Wait, hold on. So if we're at position 500, 500, and we want to go to position 1,000, 1,000, which means you add to X, subtract Y, what do we do? 500 minus 1,000 is negative 500. Okay, we'll come back to that. 500 minus 1,000 Why are you subtracting X? Hold on. Am I doing this right? 500, 500. And we want to go to point 1,000, 1,000. So you're subtracting 500 from each. This is incorrect. Right? Because in order to translate to 1,000, 1,000, you have to add to X and subtract Y because you're going to the top right. Yeah? If this is 500 comma 500 and this is 1000 comma 1000, your program would subtract 500 from the X and Y values. It would... You'd be sub you'd be adding a negative value. So you're actually going to zero zero on these, right? Your X value would be zero zero on all of these and your Y value would be correct. Your Y value would go to a thousand. This would be zero zero. So this is incorrect. Anyone thinks I'm wrong here? I'm open to correction. Oh, God. Um, float delta X equals new X minus rec zero float delta Y. Maybe you did your example wrong. The top left would be 1000 negative 1000 by your example. Top right. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you're right. Hold on. Hold on. Maybe he's right. So the X value would be 1000. The Y value. No, I'm correct. I'm correct because it's only negative in reference to the original rectangle. It is. It's because in SDL, in SDL land, okay, this up here is 0 0.00. That's what that point up there is. This direction increases the X value. This direction increases the Y value. But in any case, this whole screen is positive integers, right? That's how the game works. So if I have 0. 0.500, 500 here, and we want to go to point this, whatever the fuck that circle is now, um, that would be like, like 750, 250 or something like that. Does that work then? So this would be 500 minus 750 to make negative 250. You would then take 500 minus 250 to make 250. That would fail because you're only finding the X value. The X value needs to have the result of 750. Okay, I am correct. Correction. Oh, shit. I think this is what we got by not using vectors as a type name. Chat, we don't want a variable length array for a goddamn rectangle, okay? If there is anything that does not need to be a variable length, it's a fucking rectangle, okay? Float delta X is equal to new X minus the collision point. Oh, okay. Let's use that same example. We want the new X to be 750. Subtract 500 from it. You get positive 250. 500 
plus 250 is 750. That worked. The Y value, however, is going to be different. The Y value, we want it to be 250 from 500. So 250 minus 500 is negative 250. 500 minus 250 is correct. Okay, this is the answer. Based. I'd love to know why rectangles are eight elements here. Oh, oh, little, you little summer child. Okay, listen, let me take you on a journey, like a 30 second journey, okay? We're using a header called SDL. In SDL, there is something called an SDL float rectangle. It is a X, Y with height value, and we use it for rendering. Um, whenever we render a graphic onto the screen, like this, like these little bullets here, these are rectangles in SDL rotated when they are rendered and it's beautiful, right? But what you can see barely, cause we have a little red highlight on it, are horizontal rectangles that are not rotated. That's because there is no way to rotate an SDL rectangle, float rectangle, um, without actually like rendering it, which is a problem because collision boxes are not going to be rendered in the final game. They're just going to exist in the game's logic. The problem here is that you cannot rotate SDL float rectangles naturally. It's just an X, Y width and height value. So the logic here, the reason why we're doing this is now we're going to make our own collision based rectangles that take in an X and Y value on each point of the rectangle. So 0 0.00, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. That's a square, right? Um, we're going to take eight values where you represent four points on the cardinal system. And then by having those four points, we fuck around with them. That's also, we're going to copy this code because it is actually what I'm looking for here. Boop. Boop. Ah, oh, it's beautiful chat. Look at my great program. That is the first time I've copy and pasted anything from you people. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 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 So Delta X, Delta Y add beautiful. Oh my God. It's so nice. And then we return. I'm assuming we're returning the function. Okay. Holy shit. Are we returning it? We must be returning it. There's no way we wouldn't, right? Unless it's a void. No, it wouldn't be void. We're not affecting like a global variable or anything. Oh, geez, you never built a vector, did you? No, we built a C style array. Couldn't you make a custom struct for it? Oh, it's almost like we didn't do that. No, we, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that because, um, because I don't want to make structs with, I don't want to make structs with like eight parameters and then pass those. I don't want to do it. That sounds like, why would you have a struct with eight parameters that you define? That's so dumb. Why not just have a function called create a collision rectangle where the only thing you give it is just the rendered rectangle. And if you want to change it around later, you can translate it, you can rotate it, you could resize it, but just creating the rectangle is trivial. And then you just end up with an array float eight type of whatever you created. And we'll just call it the collision box on whatever object we use it in. Um, I think that's better. Because the only thing that's ever going to use stuff like resize, like translate's going to get used all the time. We're going to, we're going to call this a lot. Like every object, every frame will have this function. And I think it's not going to be that bad. We're not passing by reference though. Maybe that STD array is kind of a pro. Oh, it's not a C style array anymore, is it? That isn't a C style array. Well, it's not a vector. We talking about math vectors, like point, but more general. Oh, what about using a class then? I mean, it's C++. Everything is a struct until you tell it not to be. A struct with four points is trivial too, and we can be constructed in the exact same way. STD array, SDL floating point four would be a better for SDL render draw lines, but we'll deal with that later. What? We're not drawing lines with it though, are we? No, we're not. We're not SDL render draw lines this shit, okay? The reason why we're not is because we don't need to draw lines, chat. We're beautiful. It's it's wonderful, okay? Unless it's like we're seeing if the... 
Oh, I guess if we're seeing if the collision box exists, maybe. What in the hell in that is that font, bro? Oh, it's uh, ink free, size 10, bold. I like it. It's cute. You're going to draw lines for displaying the rotated hitbox for debugging, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, performance doesn't matter if you're debugging. Who gives a shit? That point lag away. We're just testing to see if something works. But you want to draw a rotated box for debugging. Yeah, OK, but then we don't care about like. What was the original point? It would be better for for SDL draw lines. Ah, it's OK. It's fine. OK, what are we doing now? We would rather would we rather tackle rotating this rectangle or around a point or resizing the rectangle around the X, Y value. Resize would be easier, right? Because resize, you're only changing the width and height of the rectangle, but the X and Y change stays the same. But it's even easier than translating it because if you resize it, it's never going negative, right? It would have to be given a positive integer and that resized rectangle would only change width and height. I feel like that's like the easiest thing. So let's do it. Copy. Paste. Paste. Comma. Float new width. Float new height. Okay. This code is so stinky. You're stinky. Change your goddamn diaper. What the fuck? Listen, I am like 100 hours into C++, OK? And you know what? For my little stupid program, I'm proud of where I'm at, OK? Look at this beautiful 60 FPS capped bullet hell. It's wonderful. Ignore that spare bullet over there. I don't know how to fix that. But look at how beautiful this is, chat. Look at how mm, it's so nice. And the mouse is like bound to the screen. And we have collision boxes to test with soon. Uh, anything with templates isn't C, it's C++. Are we doing templates? Unless you're saying like, um, namespace shit. Why not just use a struct instead of STD array? Because... Fuck you, that's why. I liked it this way, okay? The only problem with resize is to know what is the origin point. Uh, it's only going to be X and Y value, Andrew. That's we're going to. This is our rectangle, okay? Our X and Y value of the original rectangle is going to stay the same and we resize the width and height, which means we're only changing the top right, bottom left, bottom right of the rectangle. We're going to resize it like we do um, SDL rectangles, which I think has its own function, right? SDL resize rect. SDL rect. Well, I guess there's no resize, but whatever. It's like SDL rect dot X or whatever is whatever the equivalent is. And then you just change that or width and height. But you have four points of X and Y. Yes, but that's OK. Um, in fact, we don't even need to do this. All we're doing is we're just changing. In fact, we're only changing these. And these because we're not changing the top left of the rectangle. And instead of changing Delta X, we plus equals new width new width new width and then new height new height new height wait no this doesn't work oh no yes it does you're only adding to it yeah 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 no it's fine all we're changing are the top right, bottom right, bottom left side of the rectangle. And we're just adding whatever new points we want or however much distance we want. Uh, using something like struct vector 2 float x float y makes things easier. 
You guys like Strux a lot. I do too. But I feel like this is more control. I feel like I have a more finite control of what the hitbox is going to be, which is good because holy shit, where's our bullet sheet? Yo, some of this chat is going to be hard to uh, make into like rect like basically because the rectangles we're making are only collision boxes. It's not going to be like rendered textures or anything. Let me clarify what point stays in plays when you resize. Although chat. I guess this doesn't have to be a rectangle, does it? It could be any polygon. I guess we would just keep it to four sides. Uh, I don't know if I want that much control, because if I did that, I would just make a strut with four floating points or whatever, and then change the floating point values when you make the rectangle and then everything else works like translating and resizing and shit. But that sounds like a fucking whole ass library of like changing polygon shape and shit. I'm afraid you have the stupid. Mm, it happens. Listen, chat. Some of us admit our mistakes, okay? This is incorrect, though. I can already tell. Um, why is correct undefined? Oh, because I didn't actually name it. Um, this is incorrect, though, because no this is right okay why am i second guessing myself i'm correct this is this works let me clarify what point stays in plays when you resize left bottom center or something strange no it's always the top left when our when i resize the only thing that changes is not the location which implies you're changing the x and y value like you're translating it it's just resizing it which is changing the width and height of the rectangle that is all we're changing when we resize the rectangle. If I wanted to change the X, Y, I would call translate. Okay, makes sense. Oh, chat, that's the first time today you said that. Every time I say something, you're like, ah, this moron. But you guys actually complimented me. Thank you. This looks wrong. Fuck. So the origin point is top left. Yes. Correct. Things with arrow brackets are templates, like STD array. Oh, yeah, then we're using a template. Top left? Yeah, because SDL is top left, right? Hold on, chat. Um, um, here, hold on. Let me just erase real quick. So ignore this for a second, okay? Okay, so uh, get rid of that. So now, chat, think of it this way, okay? We have a rectangle. This is the way SDL does it, and I don't want to, like, fuck around with it because now this is how I imagine all my rectangles. This is 0 0.00 on the... This is 0, 0, for our purposes. This is the width. This is the height. When we resize shit, we're only changing the width and height, not the X and Y value. That's the point of this function. Please convert it from STD array float 8 to STD array vec... One, two, four. No, this is more readable. I like defining that it has float numbers and that it has eight, you know, elements. Subtract half the height from Y1 and half the width from X1 and add half the height to Y2 and half the width to X2. That's how to resize. No, 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 no. I don't want to resize from like the center of the rectangle. Okay, no interest in that. That sounds like a fucking nightmare, okay? All I want to do is resize by width and height. And because it's my goddamn game engine, and you know what, chat? This is how I understand rectangles, okay? I want that finite control, and it for me, it's hard. I don't know if it's just like a me thing. Whenever I resize polygons or circles or something, I hate it when I'm resizing it from the center of the thing, because then I feel like I'm doing it visually and not by like math. I feel like when I have like a set point I'm rendering from, I want it to be like, like not in the center of the polygon, but like in a corner and then resize from there. For me, I feel like I have more control because I know where the X and Y value is going to be, where it starts always, but the center can change, I guess. I don't know. It's difficult for me to imagine the center. 
Um, if Polygon, you probably want Vector 2D points so that it can be any number of vertices, but it would be so complicated for your game. Yeah, I know. It's our first game in C++. I feel like we should keep it simple and just have rectangles. I guess we could have like circles, but fuck that. That sounds like a collision testing nightmare. Do it in some way. You can always change the origin point. This is going to be horribly wrong when you do more than one type of bullet resize on top left. Yeah, that's fine. No, this is correct because I can change the X and Y value at any point when I translate the rectangle, the collision rectangle, right? So if I have a weird bullet, hold on. Like, what's an example you guys are thinking of here? One second. Let me pull it up. Um... Okay, so let's look at a weird bullet here like like this snowflake. How do I zoom in? There we go. So let's look at this snowflake, okay? Where would the collision box be on this? Well, you could do something like have it here or you could have it here. But in any case, it is a rectangle and the X and Y value will be defined on this object's creation. And this will always be the same. And I just, I, I could have all, re well, actually, the original rectangle size of the collision is actually based on the rendered rectangle. So it's this, that'll be the default collision size on any given rendered image, right? It's the whole thing. Then we translate to make it start here so it's going to look like that and then we resize to make it look like that and if i have to i could rotate it whenever we have a rendered image so if it's like diagonal then it's going to trans take here and it's going to rotate it however much the angle is the same math that we used when we rotated the original image maybe try to render a rectangle so we can see visually the code run yeah but like that's the logic that's what i'm trying to do Well, let me save it. Okay, where were we? Where's my collision? Boom. Okay, so that's resizing it. That's translating it, rotating it. Okay, so rotate, we are going to be based around the center of the image because that is how we render. Although it doesn't have to be. When we render a bullet, this null pointer here. Oh, you guys don't even see it. Hold on. Let me cut it off in the middle here. Um, so you have our angle. That is the same angle variable, by the way. It's a floating point that we've already applied math to to rotate the image when it's rendered. That angle variable will also apply to the rotation of the collision box. So that number is already found and taken care of and mathed out and everything. This null pointer here, this is at what point on the rendered image are you rotating from? By it being a null pointer, it defaults to the very center of the image. So I guess theoretically, we could have it start at the X and Y value of that image. Or if we wanted to do something freaky, we could have the X and Y value of like a boss in the distance. And then you have a bunch of bullets rotating around like a distant circle, like or like a moon orbiting a planet. That's possible, but that's outside of the purview of what we're doing today. But we could change this to the X and Y value of the image, but I don't want to do that. So this is just around the center. So if that's the case, our rotation point is always around the center of this SDL float point is always going to be the rotation point of the original image. It's the same rotation point. Maybe try to render a rectangle. We could see. Ow, that hurt. Ow! Scratched myself. Where's my music? There we go. Budapest. All right, what you got on Budapest? Render my rectangle. Take a renderer, render. Const that array rectangle. Four floating points array points is equal to Oh no, in the function, render my rectangle. This is a new floating point array. 
Wait. Oh, wait, you're solving a problem we haven't even started yet. This is just viewing the rectangle. Oh, you want to view the rectangle right now. Oh, you want us, you want us to test what we're currently doing to see if it does what we want it to. That's beautiful and that's wonderful. We're not doing that right now. We're doing this first. We're rotating the rectangle. And then once we have this done, then we can fuck around with like all this stuff. Also, why doesn't this work? Oh, we're not exporting these, are we? There we go. These we're exporting. Oh wait, no we're not. Hold on. This is incorrect. These need to be these. So that's create. That's rotate. That's translate. Let's resize. There we go. Beautiful. Um, this is not how you do programming. Wasted? No, no, no. We'll come back to it. It's okay. You need to test your code. Blindly coding without testing is dumb. Well, we're just going to finish this module and then we can test it and change it, right? Besides, I have the best debugger in the world. I have you guys. Well, to like watch me anyway. <laughs> I don't mean like look over my code, tell me what's wrong. If I did that, I would just do like chat GPT. I'm saying like in terms of like how I'm programming, you guys are pretty quick to be like, uh, don't do this, please. Just don't go down that path. Okay, so what are we doing here? We're rotating around a point and we have our angle. We're going to assume angle is always feeding us the correct radian information that we need. Actually, is that giving us that? Hold on. Uh, bullets, angle, uh, set angle. Angle is equal to this, so that's already set. We already have our velocity x, velocity y, 180 divided by m pi. So that's always going to be taken care of. Basically, the bullet's going to be facing wherever it's traveling, and so is our collision box. So angle is already taken care of and we have a rotation point and a rectangle now what we have to do is take each point and apply that angle to it how did we do that in bullet we just set the x and y value right yeah we have our collision x value collision y value plus equal the angle where else are we referencing angle just this. Is that how they do it? Because you're adding... Actually, how do they do that? If you want to rotate around a point, the theta is the distance traveled. Are we literally just adding the angle to the current value? That's... I guess we can do it if it's in radians, right? Do the smallest testable unit of code test fix test success to the next smallable testable unit of code? Mm. That is a better way to program, but let me do this real quick. Let me think. We have our original point. Well, let me draw it out. Our, what's our problem here? We're taking a rectangle and we want to move it here, rotated around this point. Whoops. Rotated around this girthy point. And we want to rotate it 90 degrees. So, how do we do this? We have our point, we have the radion information that we're adding with. That theta, we already have that information. So how do we actually apply it to every point where this point is now this point? Hmm. <clears throat> well, 
You can't just add theta, right? Well, no, you can. Because theta is radion information, right? It's just radians. And if you add a radian to a point, it's going to go in a circle somewhere, right? How tight that circle is, is dependent in reference to the point. I've never done this problem before. I think I might peek at that army document. Also, is it font or does he have three space indentation? Uh, one, hold on. One, two, three, four. It's the font. Trust me, Chad, if I could have three space indentation, I would have enabled that feature already. I don't know how to do that. X equals X plus sin angle cosine. Oh, wait, isn't that already accounted for? Because angle is equal to the inverse tangent of velocity X, velocity Y, and then turned into radians. You're saying... Why would I need the sine and cosine? Hold on. So this... Hold on. So this X and Y value is going to be compared to this X and Y value. So you make a line. Then you make another line here for the same value you want to go to. That is obviously 90 degrees, right? That's what we want. So, hold on, let me get rid of that arrow. We want this line and we want this line. And we know what this is because that's the angle we're going to be moving at. So you're telling me that this is what we actually care about, which is the hypotenuse, which is the opposite, right? No, hypotenuse, fuck, trigonometry. Um, this is the adjacent, this is the opposite, this is the hypotenuse. Well, no, it depends on the angle. This is theta, which is 90 degrees. This is the opposite. Wait, which one's the... No, this this is the hypotenuse. Wait, which one's the opposite? Do I need to find one of these? I guess I do. If I knew this was theta, then we could do opposite adjacent. Right? Uh, it's just visual space removes all four spaces at once. Thank you. I coded notepad base center equals calculate center offset point center offset X cosine. So we are still doing trigonometry then, huh? Side opposite right angle is in fact the hypotenuse opposite of angle adjacent to angle. Well, the problem is, is I actually don't know this in trigonometry. If you have a 90 degree angle, and that is your point of reference because that's the angle we're working with chat. Although maybe, maybe it's easier if we just don't make it a 90 degree angle. What if we just did this? Where it's not a 90 degree angle. And now we try, we need the distance of this. That's the hypotenuse. This is an angle of some kind. I know Sokotoa but how do I know which one is the adjacent and which one's the opposite? What's the logic there? Does anyone know that? Basic trigonometry? They don't let me use words? Oh, damn. Uh, he doesn't want to rotate from the center. He wants from top left pivot. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on. What's up? No, just to be clear, we are rotating from the center of the image. We're resizing from the top left. Those are different things. We are absolutely rotating around the center. No, 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 you're fine. What's up? Uh, sorry, I just saw your comment that you just made. You already corrected yourself. Um, adj uh, adjacent of angle, opposite of angle. I understand what Sokotoa is. I just don't know which one is opposite, which one is adjacent here. Because usually in the rest of our like trigonometry shit, this hypotenuse was not here. We were having like, we had like this angle. This was the hypotenuse. 
this was obviously the opposite. This was the adjacent. Or we had this angle and this was the opposite. This was the adjacent. I just don't know if the hypotenuse is here, which one is the opposite and which one is the adjacent? Or is it like opposite adjacent? I don't know which one's which. Adjacent of angle, opposite of angle. Neither is opposite. What? If the frame of reference is a right angle, neither is. If it's not a right angle, you can't do trig. Even if we know, hold on, yes we can, because we know this angle from the start, we know this distance, we know this distance, which means, well, to be clear, we know where this point is and we know where this point is, so we can find this distance and this distance, which means we can find this distance, and this distance is all I care about. Oh, we don't need trig. Wait, what am I doing? We don't need trig at all. I'm an idiot. Because we know this value and this value, which means we can just find the length of the hypotenuse just by comparing those two. That is important because now we can compare where that and that is. The pro Oh, no, I'm an idiot. Oh, shit. No, I don't know that. We don't know where this is because this whole function is taking this rectangle and putting it up there. We don't know where this is, so which means we know what this is, so we know the length of this line, and we know this angle, and that's it. Can we not do trig here to find the hypotenuse? I guess... Oh, we don't even know this angle then, do we? Woof. What is this trying to achieve? So the idea here is we're going to take this x, y value. We're going to rotate it around this center point, this x, y value. And we're going to put it, this point, up here to this x, 3, y, 3 value. We're rotating around a point. Now, my logic was, well, okay, we know what x, y is because that's where we start. We know what x2, y2 is. It's the center of the rectangle. Therefore, we know what this distance is. And we need to find this hypotenuse in order to know how far to move this point to this point by referencing the angle. That's the point here. We're rotating this rectangle and turning it into this one. Now, how do I do that? I thought you would just find the hypotenuse here, but we can't use trig because we only know one angle of the triangle that can be any size triangle. It doesn't have to be a right triangle. So we don't know this angle. Hmm. Rotating around a point is easy. Not if you're new to programming. <clears throat> if you know where the two endpoints are, just get the distance. But I don't. That's the problem. I, I can rotate this, you know, it can be anywhere from 1 to 360 degrees, but the point is that I don't know where this is. I'm letting the computer figure that out, but I don't know the algorithm to get me there. I thought I could just find the hypotenuse of this triangle and just translate the difference and do the same thing for every um, angle. And do it like that, right? And just rotate all four points, but it's not that easy. X, X, and X, 3, Y, 3 must be equidistant from X, 2, Y, 2. <gasps> oh, shit. Oh, my God. You're so smart. That is true. X and Y and X, 3, Y, 3 are indeed the same distance, which means we know this angle, this point, these two sides. And if we know those two sides, we can do the Pythagorean fucking theorem. Oh, baby. So what we're saying. Oh, my God. That is so smart. So A squared and B squared, where A and B are the same, is just A squared plus A squared, which is 2A squared. So the formula is 2A squared equals C squared. So 2A equals C. That doesn't seem right. That I did that wrong. Can you not find the square root of 
square root of 2a squared is equal to c squared. Square root of c squared? Is that not how that works? Can't you Pythagorean theorem on a non-right triangle? Can't use Pythagorean theorem on a non-right triangle? What? Of course you can. Right? Right? You can't? <gasps> Fuck! <laughs> Your example is a special case. Oh, what? Okay. So I know this side of the triangle. I know this side of the triangle. I know the angle. So am I overcomplicating this? Do I not even need to know this hypotenuse? Is this like not even triangle related? Hold on. Let's make this simpler. What if I don't even need the hypotenuse? This distance and this distance are the same distance. So what I can do is have this boom based on this angle, based on like, well, I don't know why you would need sine or cosine. This has nothing to do with trig anymore, does it? You have to use the generalization, the law of cosines. Hipponus probably doesn't matter. You don't. How do you know they are the same distance? Well, because we're rotating around an angle, right? It's a circle. This is just a giant circle. Oh, sorry, it's a terrible circle. Hold on. Fuck. One day, chat. One day they will remake. <laughs> Fuck, that's a terrible circle. Hold on. Hold on, we're getting there. Okay, whatever, close enough. No, it's not close enough. There, okay, beautiful. So this is the circle, right? Where this is the center point of the circle we're rotating around. This angle, we already know the distance that that is gonna be traveling in radians. The question is, how do I get this point? Because these are like the clock hands, right? These are the same distance. Knowing that, how can I take this point and translate it over there? It's a pure rotation? Yeah. But not only that, Chad, it has to be this point needs to move up there, like here. This point needs to move here. Fuck, here. This point needs to move here. Like it's all, it all needs to rotate. Gary, just use an actual geometry tool like Desmos. I don't need a tool. I have my brain, okay? How large is the angle? Anything. Or Arendor, it can be any size. Zero to 360 radians. Look at this. This is exactly what you're asking for. What? Right angle means 90 degrees. Okay, in this case, it's 90 degrees, but you know, what if this is like 91 degrees? We still need to do the thing. To do the rotation, you need trigonometry. What? 360 radians. You can use the sine and cosine adding functions. I gave up on math a long time ago. I only want to get to the formula. Oh. Then do random. Click this. Wikimedia. The fuck? X1, X cosine theta minus Y sine. Wait, is this the actual formula? I can't copy that. It's cheating. Hold on. What did we do for our bullet rotation? Our angle is equal to the inverse tangent of velocity X, negative velocity Y, turned into radians. That's it. It only gives me the radians of rotation. So I guess I do need sine and cosine to take that value, that currently straight line of angle, that integer value. Render takes that value and probably applies some sort of, um, I don't know, some sort of like trigonometry to it to get the rendered copy to change. So I guess we need to apply that logic here, huh? Okay. 
Well, if that's the case... Then Delta X... It's gonna be float Delta X is equal to something. Float Delta Y is equal to something. No, every point is going to have a different... Oh, I guess we are adding to it, so that's fine. The above is a rotation of about zero, zero. Hmm. Bye, everyone. I'll go to sleep. See you later, Andrew. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> See ya. Okay. So if we're rotating, let's do this. If theta is angle, then angle... I, I, I don't know why I capitalized that. I've triggered. <laughs> then... We need sine angle is equal. Yeah, no, this is not correct. And then this is cosine of angle because you're at a different, you're, you're rotated X and Y values. This is not correct, but we're on the right track, right? When we're applying our radian angle because that's already based on velocity. So basically, the thing is always facing where it needs to be. We're then applying that to every individual point based on sine and cosine. Now, this is where we need to test, okay? If you want a rotation around a different point, first translate the grid, perform the rotation, and then translate back. Uh... That sounds simple, but no, because that you're you're doing the work for the program. I want the program to do the work. Gary, you should use symbol delta for delta. No, that's too complicated. Uh, we need to start testing. I think we're gonna use WhatsApp's uh little thing here. Boop. Thank you for giving me the test code because this is trivial. Okay. Copy. Oh god, we need to create a rectangle. Oh, the testing. Okay, here's what we're gonna do, chat. That's the end of the stream today. So tomorrow, what we're gonna do is we're going to render the rectangle of whatever we create here. And then we're gonna actually make the collision. Because this is gonna work first time, right? So then we're gonna rotate the rectangle, increase the size of it, all that shit. Once that works, we're going to have our collision test, which is a lot easier to test. Holy shit. Um, and then once we're done with that, we have uh, audio and then scrolling background. And at that point, we're ready to actually design the fucking game. <gasps> wood, wood, woody, wood. Hello. If you guys haven't seen it, this is our game so far. We have a custom game engine. It's beautiful. I love it. Thank you for following Woody Wood. Look, I'm Woody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. The best meme. Anyway, this is our game engine so far. And I like it. I think it's adorable. It's beautiful, chat. We're going to make a nice little bullet hell. We're going to have all these collision boxes be, like, rendered correctly. Oh, <gasps> this could be exciting. Aren't you looking for sine theta plus delta theta? Or are you not performing a rotation anymore? <gasps> oh, God. Bring it back to me tomorrow, Brandon. Well, we'll all come back together. Ace bullet. I see you lurking there. All right, everyone. Come here. Hold on. Let's save it. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me show you my whole background so you people don't report me. Hold on. This is not lewd. Look at this. This is adult. This is mature. Chat, this is more appropriate than like 90% of Twitch streams in the just chatting section, okay? So don't get a... Get a... Get on my level, okay? We transcend here. Here, we'll switch... We'll switch backgrounds for you uncomfortable people. Look, cute character, okay? Beautiful. All right, everyone. Come here. Come on. You know what? You know what time it is. Come here, chat. Howdy, howdy, howdy. All right, chat. What are you doing hiding in the corner? Get down here. You know what you need to do. Everybody, have a good night. I stream every single day. 4.30 p.m. PD PST. I don't know what it is right now. It's 7.19, so three hours ago. All right, everyone. Have a good night. Have a good evening. Give me a good look. Goodbye. Um, ooh, chat. You taste, uh, taste kind of salty today. Um, I gotta drink some water. All right, everyone. Have a good night. Have a good evening. <gasps> Goodbye.